Happy New Year, everybody. I've got the fantasy breakdown of the huge OG Ananobi trade coming up next on Beat the Odds. Don't go anywhere. Hello, sports fans, and welcome back to another episode of Beat the Odds. I'm going to give you my breakdown of the massive Knicks-Raptors trade. If you like this content, please smash that like button, and a special thanks to all of our subscribers who have been watching these videos, as you now account for 14% of all viewers. To the other 86% of viewers that haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you to do so as it helps me create these videos for you. Also, leave a comment on your thoughts about this blockbuster trade. This episode is brought to you by Thrive Fantasy Sports. Use the promo code BEATTHEODDS to double your first deposit up to $250. And first-time users get a free square. Like tonight, if you bet on Ja to score one point, and he does, then you win. If you're unaware of the trade that went down before the calendar turned to 2024, the Toronto Raptors ended up sending seven-year vet OG Ananobi, backup big Precious Achua, and backup guard Malachi Flynn to the New York Knicks for wing RJ Barrett, guard Emmanuel Quickly, and the second-round pick in the 2024 NBA draft. Who came up on top? Well, I polled the audience, and an overwhelming 77% of you voted for the Raptors. It's true that the Raps traded one rotation piece for two in return, but it may not be as easy as that to claim who won the trade. That's why I'm going to give you my two cents on this. Prior to this trade, the Raptors were spinning the wheels off to a disappointing 12-19 and 19 start, settling into the middle of the pack in terms of scoring and defense and struggling with the team identity after the departure of Fred Van Vliet. Scotty Barnes has done more than most had expected out of the gates as a scorer and a playmaker and a defender, but both Pascal Siakam's slow start this season and OG Ananobi's slight regression from his performance offensively last season have left the Raptors without a true sense of direction. The Knicks have been putting together some building blocks for future success by bringing in Jalen Brunson from the Mavs back in the summer of 2022. It seems like the team is a couple more moves away from making a run at the Eastern Conference. Cue the afternoon of December 30th. After speculations of a possible trade out of Toronto, OG finds himself on a playoff-aspiring Knicks team, along with teammates Malachi Flynn and Precious Achua. So what are the Knicks getting? Malachi Flynn has been a capable third stream point guard, able to run an offense and knock down the occasional three-point shot with decent accuracy. He's going to be slotted in as a third string point guard for the Knicks behind Brunson and McBride, so I really don't see Flynn making an impact on fantasy squads unless Brunson happens to get injured. Precious Achua is an athletic undersized big man with an emerging three-point shot. He's a solid defender, and he can be seen frequently finishing buckets above the rim. He's going to see more time in the rotation due to the Knicks' depleted frontcourt, but he's still going to be slotted in behind Isaiah Hartenstein, and he's not really worth rostering right now either. OG Ananobi is easily one of the top five defenders at any position. His Knicks debut gave fans what to uh, expect from the 26-year-old. His defensive positional flexibility was on full display as he was tasked to defend both Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns in their 112-106 victory on New Year's Day. There are a few players in the NBA that can effectively both uh, cover both of them, and OG is certainly amongst them. He's one of the strongest wings in the game. As for his offense, he has settled into a tertiary role uh, in Toronto, and he should resume that role for the Knicks. He doesn't need to steal usage away from Brunson or Randall to be effective. He can spot up in the corner and drain threes uh, in earnest. I don't really see much of a change in his outlook and remains a top 75 player uh, in fantasy in nine cat leagues. Toronto's Hall, however, has a little more fantasy impact. OG's departure opened up a spot that RJ Barrett's going to slide into. Maple Mamba now suits up for his hometown team and should log north of 20, uh, 30 minutes per night. Like OG, RJ can muscle into the paint to create his own shot. He's proficient at getting to the line, and he's been knocking them down at a career-high and fantasy-friendly 83.1% so far this season. He's a middle-of-the-pack three-point shooter that can hold his own in that category. If he can keep his free throw percentage above 80, then he should be good for 18 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists, but his lack of a defensive stats and relative, relatively high turnover rate will continue to keep him outside the top 150 players in fantasy basketball. Now, Emmanuel quickly is the X factor in this deal. He's a score first guard with quick feet, good finishing in the paint, and he's an excellent three point shooter. His minutes were capped in New York as having both Quickly and Brunson on the floor at the same time made the Knicks quite small. Placed in the Toronto lineup, he doesn't really need to worry about facilitating as Scotty Barnes, Dennis Schroeder, and Pascal Siakam will continue to run the offense. That being said, he did secure five assists in the victory against Memphis. And I think with the uptick in minutes and shots, I'd be surprised if Quickly doesn't suppress his career high of 15 points per game that he achieved off the bench last season. He should be able to challenge to get within the top 100 fantasy players by season's end. 
Now, the Raps also received the second round pick, courtesy of the Pistons, that will likely result in a high second rounder out of a pool that should pro prove relatively weak compared to the drafts of the last five years. So who won the trade? Well, I don't see it as being a clear winner, but I do believe that the trade addresses clear needs from both teams. The Knicks get an elite defender who can be an offensive force and won't ruffle any feathers in the starting lineup. The Raptors get some much, much needed scoring and three point shooting and get two players who can slot into heavy minutes and extend the bench right away. For the sake of naming a winner, in the moment, I would have to say the Raptors, but I think it'll be a very interesting case to see how these pieces end up working out here for their new teams. And that's going to do it here for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like on the video and of course subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm going to sign off for now, but I'm going to catch you guys on our next episode.